This is why every runner should probably invest in a sauna, or at least a gym that has a sauna. And I'm not selling a sauna. I don't even have one mentioned in this video as far as a brand is concerned. I just know the data is strong, and I've seen some recent protocols that are quite interesting that I'm gonna share as well. So let's go ahead and jump in. Before we get into the detail, I put a link down below for Sundays. If you have dogs, I definitely recommend this. They have been a sponsor of this channel for a number of years, but really cool stuff. It's a human grade dog food. What that means is that if you literally wanted to eat it as a human, assuming you're human, you could. Not suggesting that you do. The point is, is that it is a dog food that is made with human grade ingredients. It was formulated by a veterinarian that was tired of like dogs getting second rate nutrients, like things that weren't all that great. So we're talking like legit sweet potato, we're talking chicken, beef, like real ingredients that again, if you wanted to eat kibble or you wanted to eat some squares of dog food, you could literally do it and you'd probably feel fine. The point is, is that we should be treating our pets how we want to treat ourselves, right? We love them so much, we care for them like they're our own kids. Bottom line is it works and it's effective and it's good for them. So I'm gonna start off with a study that was published in the Journal of Science and Medicine and Sport that took a look at runners specifically. Had these runners that were doing time trial events, had them do their normal three week training and then Crossover Design did another three weeks of training plus sauna, okay? Really interesting, they found without fail that the groups that had the running plus sauna on average had an increase in their time to exhaustion by 32%. That means they measure exhaustion in a lot of different ways that can be complicated. It's not just like, oh, I'm exhausted, I wanna stop running. There's a lot of different factors that come into play. So even though 32% sounds extreme when you factor in a lot of these different things, it's, it's not as extreme as it sounds, but it's still very significant. And these led to a 1.9% decrease in their time trial times, so an improvement in their times. So the time to exhaustion directly reflected their performance. And this is with 30 minute sauna bouts after they're running. Okay, so that would be the ideal time, is you're done running and then you go hit the sauna. Now, why is that happening mechanistically? Well, we can look at some other literature to understand that, but the basics of it, it's an exercise mimetic. So you're continuing the cardiovascular effect of your run and arguably even the oxidative stress effect of your run long after your legs are done moving. And when you know about running, you know that there's time on legs, which is important. How much time are you spending on your feet, on your legs, walking, running, etc.? And there's, of course, your running time, and there's your cardiovascular aspect of it. So there's a mechanical aspect and a cardiovascular aspect. A lot of times people are limited by their biomechanics, but they're also limited by their ability to uh, basically stay through that exhaustion phase. And that can have to do with cardiovascular, that can have to do with recovery and resilience. And this is what the sauna is rebuilding or strengthening. So you're done running and you're not taxing your biomechanics anymore, but you're still taxing yourself metabolically. But they also saw that there was a 7.1% increase in red blood cells. I'm gonna be very just blunt here. Like we know that endurance athletes do things like EPO that aren't exactly good, <laughs> totally illegal. Okay, or they blood dope, also illegal, not allowed. Some will even sleep in altitude chambers. And I know that you might be a recreational runner and you're not gonna invest in an altitude chamber, but it's a real thing and that's perfectly allowed, but it seems like a hassle, right? Now, some of that will get people an increase of like 20% in their red blood cells, sometimes even more. A 7.1% increase by using a sauna for 30 minutes after my running sessions, I'll take that any day of the week. That's huge. Now, let's understand some more components of this here. Let's talk about the recovery aspect. People think growth hormone and they think, okay, well that's for bodybuilders uh, and you don't talk about runners injecting themselves with growth hormone for recovery, right? The reality is, it, actually might make sense if that's the route you wanted to go. Like if you wanted to talk to your doctor and get growth hormone, then it probably would help you running. I mean, let's just be real because recovery is probably the bigger aspect, especially as you get like north of 30 or north of 40. Like how many times per week can you run before you're broken down? Well, the data with sauna usage and growth hormone is really strong. And this is where we can get a specific protocol. So in experimental gerontology, there was a cool paper that found that two separate sauna sessions for 20 minutes with a 30 minute break in between at 80 degrees Celsius, that's not very hot, led to a 2X increase in growth hormone for three to four hours. But if they cranked that temperature up to 100 degrees Celsius and did 15 minute bouts, a 15 minute session, 30 minute break, 15 minute session, there was a 5X increase in growth hormone. 
Then if they had subjects do one hour sauna in the morning and one hour sauna at night, there was a 16x increase in growth hormone after seven days of doing that. So what I would suggest here is higher temperature, maybe don't do it every day, morning and night, that's a lot. But if you do the 15 minute high heat session and maybe take a 15 or 30 minute cooling break and then do another 15 minute high heat session, your growth hormone result is going to be more effective. Now that's going to be a lot to ask. You just went for an hour and a half run and then you're gonna come back and you're gonna do 45 minutes or even an hour of sauna work. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to ask your husband or wife for that kind of time, right? Like, you're like okay, well, you're gonna spend three or four hours dedicated to your training and recovery. But even if you just did this a couple times per week, the cardiovascular benefits and the growth hormone benefits are still strong because the growth hormone benefits don't last like for entirety. They last for three or four hours after the session. So on your longer runs, it might make sense to use the sauna to get more growth hormone. But on your shorter runs, it might make more sense to use the sauna to give yourself the illusion, your body, the illusion of a longer run, even though it was shorter. So two different ways to do it. Long run, get more recovery. Short run, get more benefit as if it was a longer run. That's typically how I use it. I'll go for maybe a 30 minute run and then do 30 minutes of high heat sauna to give the effect of a 60 minute run. Whereas if I go for a 60 or a 90 minute run, I feel like I got enough effect and I don't necessarily need to growth hormone boost myself for getting any additional kind of effect from a sauna. So I hope that this clears some stuff up and gives you a reason to invest in a sauna to improve your running. I'll see you tomorrow.